Professor David Taylor is going to speak about the apostolic origin of our church, our Sira Malabar church. Hello. Could we have the pictures? Good. Shlama am kulchun. Shlama. So, the language of Thomas. Hello and greetings. Shlama min malpani de lishana suyaya. The bed salba de Oxford. Greetings from the teachers of Syriac in the University of Oxford. I'd like to, to thank His Beatitude and His Excellency for inviting us here today. And I'd like to apologize to you. You've seen beautiful dancing. You've had wonderful music. You've had a fabulous speech by a wonderful young woman earlier. And now you've got me. And I'm English. And I've been asked to tell you about your history. So... I have no prizes, but what I can ask you to do is every time I get something wrong, you will tell me, okay? And you'll keep a list of all the things I get wrong. So the father before was talking to us about Martoma, when Martoma was there and Christ appeared to him. And he said, I will only believe if I can put my fingers in your side and put my fingers in, in the holes of the nails in your hands. But after that, Martoma didn't just believe. After that, Martoma called him, my Lord and my God. So, is there no luck with... Oh, good. Some pictures. <laughs> this is a picture of that happening. There were no selfies in the time of St. Thomas, so we rely on manuscripts to show us what it was like. After... That story about the resurrection, we hear nothing more about Martoma in the Gospels. And so after that, we rely on tradition. We rely on early church tradition. And all of the early church traditions from all around the world all have one thing in common. They all say that Martoma traveled east and that in the east, away from the Roman Empire and in the east, he preached the Gospel and made many, many converts. And eventually he died for the faith. Now the details of these stories vary. Different accounts, different stories. And this has led some people to reject the whole tradition. And that's not surprising, because historians are like Thomas was before he met Christ. They need facts, they want to touch facts, and if they don't touch the facts, they don't know what they believe. But if we reject the traditions related to Martoma, then we'd have to reject the traditions related to all the apostles. We have the same level of information about them. We have a very special text called the Acts of Thomas, which tell us how Thomas preached, how Thomas taught, and where he went. And it was written down in Syriac, in his own language, within 150 years of the events that were being described. And in it, as you know, Christ sells Thomas into slavery and sends him to India. And on arriving, he was asked to build a palace for a king. But instead, he gave away all the money of the king. And then we hear that a palace was built in heaven. Now... For historians, several things in this are really important. Firstly, we know that ancient sailors really did travel from the Roman Empire down to India. Again, is it possible to have another picture, another slide? Yeah, well, stick there, that will do. Back one. <laughs> we know they traveled. We know that they were there. And the second thing is we know there really was a king called Gondophorus. Okay, next slide. Here's, again, no selfies, but we have a coin. Here he is, with the Indian text on the other side. He's a real person who was around at the time that Thomas was there. But this king was in the north of India. So, we have a problem. 
how do we know about the Thomas Christians in South India? Now, can we have the next slide? This, this is a map. It's a strange map. Your geography teachers won't like this map. But this is the map of the world of an Egyptian traveler called Cosmas. And Cosmas did something so strange he was named after it. He traveled to India. And his text is very important. He wrote this in the 6th century. He was an Egyptian and a Christian and he belonged to the Church of the East. He was from your own church tradition, from the, from the Syro-Malabar tradition, that branch in Egypt. And he said that when he traveled, he found Christians in Kerala. He called it Male, where the pepper grows. And he also found Christians in Kalyan, in Maharashtra. And he found Christians in Sri Lanka. And so, by 520, very early on, we know there are lots of Christian communities throughout the coastal regions of India. Cosmas never went inland, so we don't know who was there, but we know what he saw on the coast. And do we know that later Persian Christians arrived seeking refuge? Can we have a, another picture? Okay, so they, you know where this is. You've seen this before, yes? This is India. The next one. And the Persian Christians brought their crosses and they left them there. So, we know the Christians are living in Kerala at an early date, but how did they get there? And about this, there are no early written sources. So, we have to listen to what the local people, what your ancestors, told other people. And the first people to write those stories down were the Portuguese. And when they arrived, as soon as they arrived, all the local Christians told them, that they were descended from St. Thomas, that St. Thomas was their apostle. And the local Christians told them that Thomas arrived in Mylapur in AD 50 and Kerala in AD 52 and spent 20 years preaching, like we saw in the video before. And he spent those 20 years converting families from the Brahmins and from Nayas and many high caste people. Have we got another picture? This was what the Nayas looked like to the Portuguese in the 16th century. And then he was said to be martyred in AD 72. And for this, the Portuguese talked to people. They talked to your great, great, great grandparents to write down the stories. And in the centuries that followed, as the Portuguese and others attempted to force the Syro-Malabar Christians to abandon their ancient religious practices and customs and to become like European Catholics, they were repeatedly told by the local church leaders that the Syro-Malabar church had its own apostle. It had its own apostolic line. Again, can I have another picture? <clears throat> the Christians of Kerala are and always have been Indians. There were many important arrivals. You know these stories of Christians from Persia who married into local families. But the Syro Malabar Church is not a community of immigrants or a community that's been converted by missionaries from Europe or the Middle East. The Syro Malabar Church proudly claims direct descent from the Apostle Thomas, sent by Christ. It's not dependent on the Apostles Adai or Mari or even St. Peter, although it honors and respects all of these. And I've got one last thing, and then I'll be quiet, and then something more entertaining will probably happen. The Syro-Malabar apostolic tradition is not just a tradition that looks backwards. It's one that looks forwards. Ken, can I have the last slide? The Apostle Thomas traveled across the then-known world in order to teach the gospel. Today, the Syro-Malabar Church, that is you and your priests and your bishops, are opening new churches, you're opening youth centers, and you're opening missions across the world, including here in the United Kingdom. This is a magnificent sight, all of you here. This work is proof 
that the apostolic tradition is alive and well within your church. And I'm sure, I'm sure, the Apostle Thomas is both proud of you and working together with you. Thank you very much.